So in this case, we are going to consider, actually, let's just, just say the last part, because uh, the rest of the questions, so we have uh, them. Uh, I'm just going to try find time so that I just play them. I just I put them in a playlist so that when you're working with these guys, you just follow up the playlist. Uh, that can help uh, so that you understand what I'm trying to say, because the rest, like, have been already covered. But what we just need here is to focus on this part, which is important uh, to be added on our derivatives as we deal with the, de the disguised form. Something that is disguised, guys. It's Okay, it's just like we've got the real thing, but it's disguised to be not that part that you are used to. You know, guys, if you use the word disguised. So it is the same thing like our derivatives. If something is in the disguised form, it means it is it is preventing itself to be in a standard form. It is avoiding it is uh, avoiding itself to be in the normal form, which is our standard form. So it's actually not in what standard form not in standard form and uh, not uh, a standard function, which is our standard form, uh, is the part where we have what? A standard function that can be differentiated direct. If you see that you are given y is equal to the sine of x, this part can be differentiated. If you are given y is equal to e to the exponent, we have the basic derivative. We have the basic derivative for this we, we talked about every part of our derivatives, those basic sign, cos, tan, any, anything. But we have expressions or terms which are actually totally, totally disguised. For an example, y is equal to 2x minus 3 into a bracket 2x plus 3. Are we going to use the product rule to say we never talked of the product rule so far? Because there's a product, there's... What are we going... It's disguised, guys. We cannot differentiate this one, this one, this We, we never had something like that. We talked of the sum, remember, in our previous case, we, we talked of what? The sum. The sum rule. The rule of the sum is the sum rule. We are not yet at the product. But they are just disguised as something that is part of that sum rule. If we are to simplify this, so anything that is in the disguised form, try by all means to simplify. If you are dealing with these algebraic expressions, expansion of brackets, factorization, uh, trig functions, Applying of the trigonometric identities, all that part. That's how you, you go about the disguised. So like in this case of ours, if we are to take a proper look and see, this is a difference of two squares. Expansion of brackets can tell us that. A minus B into A plus B. Or you can expand your brackets properly. But remember, A squared minus B squared was taken from where? A minus B into A plus B. Exactly what we have here. So this can be given back to a squared minus b squared. a and b, a and b. This is our a, this is our b. So it is supposed to be what? a squared minus b squared. So it's 2x squared minus what? 3 squared, like this. 2 squared, that is 4x squared. 3 squared is going to give us what? 9. So rewriting this, guys, is same as what? 4x squared minus 9. But look, it was hidden in, this, in these brackets. But after explaining, you can see, oh, I have this one, which can be what? Differentiated with respect to x. We differentiate, we drop this 4 times what? I mean 2 times 4, which is 8x. Remember, we're supposed to subtract what? 1. 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this one remains like that. 9 is a constant. What is the derivative of a constant? To be 0. 
So meaning to say, if we differentiate a nine, we're gonna get a zero. So the answer will be just eight x. Derivative of a constant is zero. So just like that. But before it was this guy, it was something like, wait, how can how can we differentiate? It's in a, a non-standard form. So it's always an approach to to see, okay, what can I do? Apply of identities if there is a need of uh, any application of your identities. Fake phrasation where it is uh, applicable. All right. Uh, we've got something like this. Let's say I want to differentiate y with respect to x in the given. Cos 2x like this. Everything over the cos of x plus the sine of x. So like enough, we talked of what? The trig identities remember from our trig identities we need to differentiate these guys to find what dy dx but look the way that it is as we are used when we just see a cos and it and now the fraction this and that we are not yet on the application of the quotient rule or the product rule no it's not always we just write u over v then you see now uh, it's not always can we apply identities? Remember our double angle there, the cos of 2x. We said that there are three identities giving us cos of 2x. Cos squared of x minus the sine squared of x. Two cos squared of x minus one. One minus two sine squared of x. All this is the same as the cos of 2x. Which one would be best to use? If you look into the first one, we'll see that there's, there's something here. Cos squared minus sine squared. Are we seeing a difference of two squares here? A squared minus B squared. We are back to our difference of two squares. Factorization. A minus B into what? A plus B. We are back to that. So you can apply those factorizations where they are applicable. So, we are just analyzing which one. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? It's not even a difference of two squares. It's going to be complicated. So, looking at the first one, and having also this cos x plus sine x, we can see that if we apply our difference of two squares, they were going to cancel. So, the best part, since there are three identities equivalent to the cos of 2x, you have to test. So the best one was going to be the first one, which is what? Cos squared x minus what? Sine squared x. This is the equivalent of this identity of cos 2x. We substitute the denominator as it was. All right. As we applied, uh, like I was uh, uh, explaining here, the difference of two squares. So you can apply the difference of two squares. A minus B into A plus B. Cos raised to the exponent of two sides. So we have A and B there. We have our A and what? Our, our B. So this is our A and this is what? This is our B. So we need A minus B. A plus what? A plus B. Just like that. So that was going to be what? Cos of X minus sine of X. A minus B. Into what? A plus B. Cos of X plus the sine of X does not matter which bracket is going to start. Guys, it's like, it's like you are under trigonometry. It's like you are under trigonometry. Look, the question is for derivatives. But look what you have to go through. Just for you to see, you have to go through an application of those identities. It's not always that you just, okay, it's not applicable. I cannot differentiate this. No. Go through those identities because it's also a subtopic again to be done. So you see that these two are going to cancel. Same. So this will give us one. So what are you remaining with? We are remaining with what? Cos of x minus sine x. Cos of x minus the sine of x. Look, guys, the way that we are saying it's disguised. What do we have at the end? This is a 
standard function, we can differentiate this. This is our standard trigonometric function. Where did we take it from, guys? It is the same thing here. Has it, has it changed? No. We were simplifying the same, the same part here that we had as it is here. The same thing that we had here. here. It is this one. But it was disguised, not, not for us to see it. That is a standard. That is why we are saying it's a disguised, disguised form. We can see that it is a standard. But look how it was written before. We had to simplify in order for us to see, oh, it's a standard. Then we can what? Differentiate. As we have our derivatives now here. This is where we go back, you see. So it is very, very important. Very, very important. We have the cos. What is the derivative there? So therefore, dy dx was going to give us what? All right, cos, remember, that's a negative sign. Cos, a negative what? A negative sign. So we're going to get a negative... Uh, a negative there, sine of x. That's a negative uh, sine of x minus we differentiate sine. If you differentiate a sine, sine gives us what? A cos. As it is, it gives us what? A cos. So the minus, guys, is of the question here. There's a minus here. This is the one that we see here. So it will be minus cos x. Not to say our answer is minus cos, no. The cos is the answer to the derivative of this sign. But there was already a negative on our question. So it will be minus. So let's say the answer was a negative. It was going to affect, it will be negative, negative. I'm just saying. Let's say there was a negative. So in our case, it's a negative to what? to a positive value, so it's going to be negative. The negative is of the question, but the derivative of a sign is what? Cos. So this is the idea, guys, of uh, these formats. It's not uh, always where you are given the standard form. The, the exam just gives you a standard form where you can simply apply your question. No, it's not always. I mean, they want you to Figure out, do we have anything that can be done in that consideration? There is anything that can be done. Apply factorization. If it is possible, we are given y is equal to the square root of uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25. Apply your factorization. You can see this is a perfect square here. But anyways, from our basics of factorization, N3, if the coefficient of x squared here is 1, x squared, when you are given that the coefficient there is 1, we simply consider having two brackets, x and x. Then we ask ourselves, what are the factors of what? Positive 25. Factors of positive 25, which will give us what? A negative 10. Factors, products, two numbers. You multiply two numbers, you get what? Positive 25. That's 5 and 5. But if we add these two, are we going to get a negative 10? No. 5 plus 5 is 10. Not negative 10. So to get a negative 10, what must happen? We must have negative, negative. Negative times negative, that's a positive. But if we add minus 5 plus minus 5, that's a minus 10. So this is what we want. So we're going to have what? Minus 5 here, minus 5 here. So this is factorization, guys. If you even have a challenge, you can through the fact, go through the factorization for even grade 11, grade 10 mathematics, there because that is where they have much detail of this factorization and they have explained uh, different ways and methods and simplest ways that can be done. It can be helpful. And also, in terms of your simplification here, a bracket and a bracket. 
x minus 5, x minus 5 is just like you're given 2 times 2, 2 squared. 3 times 3, 3 squared. So a bracket times this bracket simply means that bracket is raised to the exponent of 2. Why raising to the exponent of 2? We are having a square root. The square root of x squared is x because this simply neutralizes. So if you are given the square root and you have got a square, it simply cancels this part. So y is equal to x minus 5. So are you seeing? It was a complicated thing that we had to work with from your, these are your factorizations from your entry. You factorize using those techniques, but simplifying later on, you see, okay, I have the basic, the standard functions that I'm used to. So now the derivative can be determined of y with respect to x. What is the derivative here? x, remember, this is 1x, so it's just going to be 1. Or you can apply the concept x to the exponent of 1. Remember, you drop the exponent. So that's going to be 1x. You subtract 1. So 1 minus 1, that's a 0. And we know that any number to the power of 0 is what? 1. So 1 times 1, which is 1. So this was going to give us 1. The derivative of negative 5, guys, this is a constant. With respect to x, it will give us what? A 0. So it's just like 1 minus 0, which is what? Which is 1. So this is the idea there. So if you are given questions that are in a disguised manner, what you need is to simplify them first. Apply your basics of your knowledge in terms of each topic that is being given. Their factorization, uh, their exponents, are they logarithms, are they whatever that you're given, they are, are they trigonometric functions? If they are identities, if they are rules to be used, that it becomes a standard at the end. Let it be done. Because at the end, we must have something in the standard form, whether it is of the trigonometric, whether it is of the algebra, whatever that you're given, it must be back to the standard that when you look it, into it, you know that the answer is this. So that is the, the condition. So let's do revise as many questions as uh, we can.